So, uh, ethics in software. Uh, what so, you one of the things, one of the things that I did expand, I actually covered a little during the last podcast, right? So, about ethics, so I talk about laws, how software development should be compared to the construction industry and all that. And I also cover a little thing about, for a certain case, we're actually very good at encoding practices in our software. So, so I want to talk about it takes, I do to talk about it takes on different on this topic, different on this topic, but not in particular order. So when I talk about software development, most of, often we don't really care about ethics that much, unless we lost money. So we are very bad at this. So give me an example when uh, ethics uh, actually matters. Yeah, often ethics doesn't matter. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, that it, you know what? I'm going to eat my word, my word just now. Just now. So, I'm, because I say something stupid, right? Here goes. Um, Sometimes a lot of these small issues we can't really think about right now. A uh, simpler one is uh, when we sell financial product. When we actually do produce a uh, do a website to give financial advice, should we start selling financial product? So there are those things. Uh, and here's why that matters. Uh, why would that be any different from let's just say that you are actually uh, in sales? Wouldn't it be the same? Uh, Correct, but uh, it depends on the mission of the site. In this case, do, uh, do you want to have you are giving uh, advice across product. So you're talking about, you want to save more money. Do you want them to focus only one on money or do you want to have a broad range of information for them to know how to properly save their money? The risk profile, what kind, how, how many, uh, what kind of thing they do and whatnot. So what would actually constitute or rather in your opinion, uh, so, proper software ethics when it actually comes out to financial advices? Huh. It's less of a software as a project, as a tool itself. It's more of content. In this case, it's a content, right? So it's about content and all that. But in the uh, in publishing, they in publishing politics, there is a solution for that: disclosure of interest. And this is something that we don't actually do for uh, for something as simple as writing up uh, creating a website. Some uh, some actually do that. Uh, for example, if you do a uh, review, uh, a lot of the review that actually says uh, we have we ha- uh, this is the following uh, affiliate links. Those are essentially uh, those are essentially uh, declaration of interest, right? Because we get something out of this. Uh, some actually on the on the podcast they actually say things like. Uh, this is sponsored by this and we use this product so there's a disclosure of interest so those are actually on content side uh, other place when we have ethics issue might be recommendation actually this actually can be from the book weapon of mad destruction uh, because sometimes we use shorthand to do, shorthand to do data so for example, we tend to look at certain race as poor as a result, use that as a shortcut for higher risk individuals. Because it's just it's just a shortcut. As a result, we can have a racist algorithm. How do we solve that? Uh, more testing, uh, balance. There's a lot actually for that part there's still a lot of research going on. So this is technology and it takes on interest, finance, risk factor. Racism. Um, yeah, I think th- there's still a lot of this on basic ethics side, and also you want to if in the show we're also talking about things like uh, Volkswagen and all the other thing. That's actually a good example since uh, I think that uh, something that the Volkswagen did is actually uh, something that uh, people actually understand about. So when it comes down to say the Volkswagen issue and it applies to your current whatever you're actually doing for software engineering, what is your uh, point and what is your advice to anyone who is actually 
remotely approaching the Volkswagen type uh, situation when it comes down to software engineering? Or Short answer is says no actually. Just willing to say no, say no. I know it's very hard because once you, once you rely them on contract money and all that, it's actually very hard. But the best approach is to have the ability to say no uh, and to have some protection for people that do that. And actually across other industry, we just don't have that good of protection for people that break rules uh, to disclose information, to not do something. It just, as a, as in the corporate world, in the workplace, in whatever industry, not just a technical field, not doing things for whatever reason, even for ethical reason, it's not, it's, there's consequence from it. You will be punished simply because you're not a team player. Okay, so, so this is actually a culture of workplace more than technical issue itself. So if let's just say that uh, this to actually have a, uh, I'm not sure whether you guys actually are family with this in all sorts of is that recently there was an uh, IGN reviewer who was uh, copying reviews from other people and yes. publishing under this one. Yes. So when it comes down to software, something is actually more relatable is that uh, cop you yourself copying other people's code and actually publicizing and putting out especially open source code as this one is, is one of the examples. But what if, let's just say that you're working in a team or you're managing a team, how would you be able to detect that any of your guys is actually um, doing and copying things or doing things that they are not supposed to be able to be doing or should be? That's wow. a tough one. That's actually a very tough one because Copying software to be used is actually a common way to do things. It's a very common way to do things actually. That's why we have open source software library. So, especially one of the cases when uh, I, I think it was uh, quite some time ago, there was uh, some guys or uh, it lives on the forum is that uh, that guy was pretty happy with uh, copying some of the company's code. Yeah, and actually just. Uh, uh, copying and be using the same code over to another company. Okay, this so one. what is your what is your take on that? That the short answer for that is law, because by contract you're not supposed to do that, and company can sue. But the long answer is, do you as a company as a management, which do you prioritize? Do you prioritize result without any consequences, or you? chain are required to be right due to legal reason because technically you can bring the code over and for all property software often the, the source code are not are not shown to anyone outside the organization unless somebody leak it up so the contract law in companies actually says things like uh, you're not supposed to bring code over but now you move to company b they have the same type of clause so we are leaking out this information, break the contract. Often the answer for that is yes, because it's proprietary. So it's harder until somebody find out. And there's simply no practice to do audit for software similarity. In fact, there's not much of a software audit unless there is a you look around security. Which goes to one of the things we also do for ethics is why is this thing to talk about ethics actually security issues? And for them actually software the software industry actually very did a very good job. Almost all frameworks have some basic security built in already encoded. So for security we do a very good job. We have some good ex uh, good policy around security, especially on the third party, not necessarily internally. So we can cover something until your boss says we need it fast, we don't care. So that's another issue altogether. And if uh, we don't care part, often uh, they will just delay until something happens because there's security but obscurity. Whereas that's another thing. So you did mention the quite a number of things uh, or vented about uh, things that is actually should be more ethical, should be more secure, should be more different. Okay, yeah. should, should, should. Uh, so what do you actually advise or prescribe or what should anyone uh, of uh, everyone in this particular industry should do? 
Yeah, that, that, that is more complicated. So we thought about usually when we look at software development, we look at okay. So let's. I want to backtrack a little. I thought about engineering, engineering, construction industry, uh, like software industry. Uh, things only happen when there's a crisis and a disaster. So for construction, it be collapse of building, and for software, it's security incidents, data leak, or something that's a little more great. Uh, so for construction base, actually a very clear line of who is liable. In this case, management or people that sign sign off a building, but not not operator, not operator machinery, not manufacturer. Uh, in software industry, we let's uh, let's say we have a data leak. So of course, uh, both we have some investigation, some investigation. I do not believe. A big company do that. I do not believe small company do that. So for security incident, as a result, uh, as a result for small company, it's more opaque. But nonetheless, there's an incident report, right? Then, uh, then who should be liable? So for consumer industry, I already said management and people that signs off the building and people that are involved. For software, we need to figure out who should be liable. Uh, so the easiest solution is actually uh, uh, the manager or the owner, or the owner because they they are the one that actually set the schedule and people actually build the software. But then it's a little more clear because sometimes we as a software developer are not very low level. Did you just in, in, in the fact that uh, these so uh, open source software licenses because one of the point of uh, GNU for instance GPL yeah. and all stuff is that uh, if you use the software. Yeah. The author of it is actually not liable. So if anything security actually happened, something really bad happened, and because of some security problems, with open source software, yeah. does that mean that uh, yeah, don't use open source software then? Yes and no. Yes and no. Actually, yes and no. Yes, bad software should not be used. That's a free market. That's a best thing. So, but it's also a little more complicated because. Unless the person got paid to build the software, it's actually very hard to fire the guy or make them liable. Which is why there's always, uh, there's always like uh, a chain, a chain of responsibility involved here, right? So here's a here's a quick example. Uh, let's change to something less serious, right? Porn side. Porn site. Okay. Uh, in in the real world, in the real world, I'll say software. Uh, anybody that operate, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I try to use a politically correct way to say the word. Okay. So let's say. Uh, somebody had a sex toy shop legally you should not have that in malaysia okay legally so who should be liable so in the real world the owner of the shop is liable now you have a pawn site so people, uh, and the concept use word press who should be liable the owner of the site not the creator of the press but something more serious let's say you have this um, let's say go one step further. You had a web, uh, you had a bank that secure money, but that inadequately, inadequately secure the money, right? Uh, and there is a security incident where they got money stolen by very stupid reason because of inadequate security. Who should be liable? The owner of the bank and the person that built the whole bank because they cut in corner. Now you had an e-commerce shop. You do not take adequate security measure uh, to secure your credit card information, right? In this case, the same rule applies. The chain of responsibility should be the owner because the owner, uh, the owner, uh, should check more on the site. 
wouldn't be in this case is that if the owner is yeah. not a technically minded person no. and he hired a developer who's also not really that good correct, at security, correct. So, who is actually reliable here because the owner may not be able to you know, figure out whether or not this particular yes. person is security oriented or not. In this case, right, look, go back to the real world, then you will realize that the owner on the building uh, actually will, if that are not clear, they always goes back to their, the local technical person responsible. That's the real world. So in this case, either the technical person or the, the consultant they hire. In the software world, the same rule applies. So in this case, uh, they might just install, but the last person that actually knows the security incident and all that should, should be liable. So in this case, the creator of the eShop CMS system. So, but here's the catch, here's the catch, here's the big catch. How do you know, how do you know that a software have done adequate, adequate measure to do the right thing? So in the real world, there's always an inspection system, right? There's inspectors. Is there? There should have for some, but it's not always there. And for people to be inspected and all that, there is actually a certification and all that. Right. Do you actually certify, say, your e-commerce site for any form of uh, lack security, like storing the password the wrong way? Yeah, and that's the problem. Do we want to do that? In the real world, sometimes it works, but it doesn't catch everything. But in software, do we want to do that? Software is very dynamic. Short answer is, maybe it works. Uh, but people that works in software long enough that our practice of QA is horrible. So we don't always catch bug or we let a lot of the bug goes on different way. So this, this topic is actually very wide, all right? Very wide. You can you can talk the whole day, debate the whole day about law, you can talk the whole day about practices, you can spend the whole day talking about inadequate engineering practices in software development. So it's you're going to spend the whole day talking about this. For a long time. So before we actually spend a whole day uh, just fully talking about this, in terms of uh, what is the any takeaways that you want to be able to tell, tell everyone, who, especially those who are say new to software development, oh, yes. okay, there are these problems. Yes. So yes. what they should look out for, where they should, what they should be actually be doing. So here's one of the cool thing about software industry is that we always have documentation. Overall, always have documentation. We always have disclosure policies. Uh, there is something that we don't always see in the real world, but in software world, we have a lot of disclosure policy. Those are little more stories that you can learn about vulnerabilities. Uh, we also, uh, the practices of security, offensive and defensive is actually open to public, something to take, learn about. And uh, for product owners, you should really be a little more careful about you need to think deeper uh, i'm not saying that ethics problem is always clear not always but you need to think deeper about this and if you got involved in money then you need to think about are we doing enough to protect the money that we have or how much will our user security compromise all that is think deeper be a little more careful okay so if anyone uh, because we actually did this uh, round about way, yeah. have any questions regarding uh, all these ethics and stuff? Where would you be uh, online? Anything else for anyone <laughs> to ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, twitter.com at swimming. Okay, that's S W E E M E N G. So tweet at uh, swimming and uh, get some follow ups. So, uh, anything you want to say to anyone uh, during the video? No, thanks for listening to my rant. I hope you enjoyed this. This is Swimming, signing off.